Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. And also, welcome back to my brand new NetData course. We're up to video number four with today's upload, and so far in this series, we've done a lot. In the first video, I gave you an overview of the course in general. In the second video, I showed you how to install NetData. And then in video number three, I gave you more information when it comes to how the graphs and tabs are laid out. From this point forward, we're going to go deeper and deeper into NetData's core feature set and you're going to learn all kinds of cool and useful things about NetData. This time around, what we're going to do is dive back into metrics to better understand them. In particular, we're going to look at both core metrics and application metrics in today's video. But before we dive into today's video, what I want to do is just make sure that you understand an important concept related to NetData. And that is, by default, NetData monitors every metric every second. And while you can configure this frequency, this is the behavior by default. And this is unique among observability tools that aren't generally as fast with a granularity of 10 seconds, a minute, or even five minutes. Such tools are designed this way due to wanting to strike a balance between granularity and performance, but NetData was designed with per second metrics in mind since the beginning, and this distributed and decentralized approach is what makes this possible. So with that in mind, let's dive into metrics, starting with core system metrics. First, let's access our NetData dashboard. If you have the cloud version, it's best to use that, or you can follow along using a local installation if that's all you have. That said, what we'll do is visit the Metrics tab. It's this tab right here, so I'll click on that. And here on my end, we see metrics from a handful of servers, but if you're viewing this from a local dashboard, you'll only see a single server here. What's really cool here is if you hover your mouse along the graphs, you'll see a helpful line that'll give you an idea where exactly you are on a graph, and a handy pop-up that'll appear that will show you more specific information about a data point. We can see several metrics here, some of the most important being CPU, RAM, network, and of course, I.O. If you're experiencing some sort of concern with your server, perhaps it's running slow, or maybe your users are complaining about something, the information that you see here within the graphs will immediately give you an idea which metric is the most saturated. And sometimes, that's all you need to know. So let's take a quick look around. Right here, I'm on my metrics tab, like I mentioned. We see total disk reads, average CPU, total network inbound, as well as outbound. You see the average system load. But here on the right, like I mentioned in an earlier video, you'll get more specific information. So if I scroll down, you'll see some of the things that I have here. Here we have Kubernetes. I have a Kubernetes cluster that I just installed NetData onto. So we see information regarding Kubernetes here, which is pretty cool. We have a section for containers and VMs. And we also have applications. I'll be talking more about application metrics shortly, but here we have Apache, Open Lightspeed, Postfix, CrowdSec, and so on. Now here in the metrics tab, we're seeing metrics for various hosts. Now on my nodes tab, we can see that I have quite a few servers. If I scroll down here, we can see graphs that are specific to individual nodes. And I can also jump to a node over here in the right as well. So we see my main Kubernetes controller. This is my testing Kubernetes cluster. We have node one and node two. So here we're seeing metrics specific to different hosts. And of course, if I want to jump to a very particular server, I can simply click on it here on the right and see information pertaining to that node. I clicked on Fedora Dev, one of my test servers, and it brought me right to that node right here. Now back to the metrics tab. Right here under total CPU utilization, what I'm going to do is just move my mouse around right here. You'll see, like I mentioned earlier, more specific information. CPU pressure, of course, we see that as well. Memory pressure and so on. Now something that's really useful to look at here on the metrics tab is top nodes by CPU as well as top nodes by used RAM. So this will give you an idea of which hosts are using the most resources in one of those two categories. Here I have my discourse server. We can see that it's using 63% of memory. And like I mentioned earlier in the series, some people might think that's kind of high, but Linux servers exist to do work. After all, if you don't have work for a Linux server to do, then why are you paying for it? 
63% is getting a little bit on the high end, but it's not that bad. If it was closer to 80, that would be a problem. But this just means simply that there's quite a few people in my forums right now, which is a good thing. I like my forums to be popular. But of course, if this metric right here gets to be too high, then I'll need to respect that particular instance. Now, when it comes to top nodes by CPU, um, we see that my Proxmox server has a load of 6.52. I have quite a few cores on that Proxmox server. So even then, that's not all that high. Sometimes you have to use a bit of common sense when it comes to which nodes are going to be important. Of course, we have alerts and anomalies that we can look at to get more specific information about when things are a problem. But the general takeaway right here is we are seeing information right here in the metrics tab that is going to help us pinpoint any resource contention that we might have. And as I scroll, you can see the massive amount of metrics that we have here. I'm not even a fourth of the way down the page yet. I'm seeing all kinds of different things. And of course, I can't go over every single dashboard here and every single graph. Most of them are pretty self-explanatory. So for example, ZRAM, for systems that happen to use that, I do have a few. So we're going to have a ZRAM section here that's going to give me metrics for that in particular. In general, the metrics tab provides real-time per second time series charts for all nodes in a room. It helps you visualize, explore, and troubleshoot the metrics across your entire infrastructure in one place. And the room that I'm in right now is all nodes. Now, if I drop this down, I have other rooms as well. I have a testing room. I have a production room right here. I'll click on that. And this is going to show all of my production servers. And then here in testing, I have all of my development servers. Now here we get a message that's letting me know that three nodes are below the recommended agent versions. So you might see this if you have some nodes that are pending update. Now on my end, these particular nodes right here that NetData is letting me know about, these three nodes are my Kubernetes servers. And this is expected because I've had them off for quite some time and I turned them on this morning. And of course they haven't been updated since the last time they were on. So I was expecting this message, but as soon as automatic updates happen, which I configure on all of my servers, it should automatically take care of this. I think it's really helpful that NetData will let you know if you have a node that is out of date. Anyway, back to the rooms. So as I was mentioning earlier, if I go to the metrics tab, for the room that I'm in, I'm in the testing room right now, I'll get per second metrics for all the nodes that are in this particular room. So we're seeing some of my testing servers right here. So these are my Kubernetes servers that I mentioned earlier that I just powered on this morning. I have this entire testing Kubernetes cluster that I use when I want to test various Kubernetes related shenanigans, but we see them here in this list. I also have a Alma Linux testing server. I have a Fedora testing server and so on. And of course, this has given me top nodes by CPU, top nodes by used RAM, the same thing that we saw when I clicked over here in all nodes and went to metrics. We saw the same thing here on this list as well. In fact, here it is. So we have production and we have testing. So it's a good idea to split your nodes into different rooms. I mean, think of it this way. You're gonna have some nodes that you care a lot about, things that are mission critical, but you're also going to have some testing servers that aren't as important. For the most part, I use testing servers when I am preparing content for this channel. So that's why I have that room. But when it comes to production, that's where all the most important things are. And we start to see some of the servers that I actually use, like my Discord server for the forums. Also right here, we have the server that powers the main website for the channel, learnlinux.tv. It's sitting at RAM usage of 53% currently. And of course you see that this changes over time. We just saw that the order shuffled here because NetData is constantly checking this. And just like I mentioned before, I can hover over any of these graphs right here to get even more information. Anyway, what I recommend that you do at this point is just browse through the metrics tab and have a look. It's all kinds of information that you can glean from the charts that'll give you even more information when it comes to how your infrastructure is doing. Next, let's take a look at application metrics. In the previous section, I was focused on core metrics, which relate to resources that all servers have in common. For example, all servers have storage, CPU, and RAM. So metrics like those are known as core metrics within NetData. Application metrics, on the other hand, have to do with more specific use cases for a given server. For example, database metrics are useful for database servers, and web servers such as Nginx will show metrics that are more specific to serving web content. 
And the great thing about this is that NetData is dynamic. If you don't have a database engine, such as MySQL or MariaDB installed on the server, then those metrics won't be visible here since they aren't relevant. What NetData does when it's installed is profile the server that it's running on, and it'll enable whatever metrics are specific for that type of server. For example, if NetData sees that Nginx is running on a server, then it'll immediately start showing metrics for it. And what I'll do right now is go over some application metrics that I have in use on my own servers. Now, if we go over here to the right, we have our system metrics. What I'll do is scroll down a little bit more here. And when I scroll down to the very bottom, we have applications. So on my network, I have Apache, Open Lightspeed, Postfix, CrowdSec, and also Redis running on my servers. Now keep in mind, I'm in the production room right now. So the metrics that I'm seeing right here are from the servers that are a part of this room. So if I go to the testing room right here, and then the metrics tab and scroll down just like I did before, you'll see different applications listed right here. Of course, we see Kubernetes, which is a very important thing to monitor. We definitely wanna keep an eye on Kubernetes if we do run that. But what you're seeing here are application metrics. And then up here, we have our core metrics like CPU, memory, storage, network, and so on. Again, the things that all servers have. And then down here, we get the individual metrics for our servers. So I'm gonna go back to the production room. And let's just have some fun. What I'm going to do is click on Apache. Let's just explore my network. Anyway, when I click on Apache, we see that I have one server right here that is running Apache. On my NextCloud server, Apache is what's serving the web content for NextCloud. So right here, you're seeing my actual NextCloud server. In addition to that, we can see individual pieces of information. So for example, if you wanted to keep an eye on requests, you can see all the requests from my NextCloud server. And the thing is, my NextCloud server is currently being rebuilt, so it's not even publicly accessible yet. There's really not all that much going on here, but we can see metrics for it all the same. And I guess it would be pretty alarming if the metrics were going crazy on a server that wasn't being used, that would be a red flag for sure. But anyway, we could also look at connections. We could see how many connections we have going to the server. We could keep an eye on bandwidth, for example, which is going to be especially important when it comes to NextCloud. And again, I'm looking at metrics for Apache, even though I'm talking about NextCloud, and that's because the server that's running Apache is my NextCloud server. When I click on Lightspeed right here, we can see some of the requests that are coming in for Open Lightspeed. I have several servers that are using Lightspeed. We can see throughput, we can see connections, we could take a look at the cache, and so on. Now, a bit more interesting, what I'll do is click on testing. That's where my Kubernetes cluster happens to be. And I'll scroll down and we will see application metrics that are specific to Kubernetes. So I'll click on it. And we can see the overall CPU usage. And since this is a testing environment, we're not going to see a ton of usage here. Just 8% of memory is being used. Less than one gigabyte of memory is being used, which is going to be you know, quite a bit less than you'd expect for a Kubernetes cluster. But again, it's a testing Kubernetes cluster. So unless I'm recording a Kubernetes specific video, it's not going to see all that much usage. But on your end, if you have a production Kubernetes cluster, then this is going to be critical for you. A lot of companies out there are basing almost everything on containers nowadays. So we definitely need to keep an eye on what's going on. You can see the CPU usage, utilization, for example. We can see memory, we can look at disk. As you can see, just about anything that you might be curious about when it comes to an application specific metric, you can find it right here within NetData. And again, NetData is dynamic. If I didn't have anything Kubernetes running within my infrastructure, then it would not be shown here at all. The applications that you're seeing here on the right hand side are things that I'm actually using. So if you wanted to get an inside look at Learn Linux TV and some of the services that are being run, then you're getting that right here. Again, we have Open Lightspeed, Apache, you just saw Kubernetes, and those things were enabled automatically for me. I didn't have to you know, tune that or anything. NetData automatically started monitoring those services for me, which is really, really cool. And you know what? Let's talk more about that. The key takeaway here is that we can monitor anything with NetData. Up until now, you've seen metrics that NetData provided for us, 
We didn't have to train NetData on how to monitor our servers. It immediately got to work right after installing it. As I mentioned before, NetData adjusts itself so that it monitors your servers effectively, customizing itself to pay attention to metrics that are actually in use. This is why you'll see Kubernetes metrics on your Kubernetes servers, but not your database servers. Being able to use NetData effectively as a turnkey solution is great, but there might still be a situation in which you need to customize exactly what NetData pays attention to. In fact, NetData enables you to monitor anything. Even if a metric doesn't get picked up, which I've never seen happen personally, NetData can utilize what's known as collectors to gather metrics from other applications and services. And there's a few ways that NetData can facilitate this. For the more advanced administrators among us, you could create your own collectors using a programming or scripting language. So if you're competent in one of those areas, you could use your skill set to extend NetData even further. If the concept of writing a custom connector interests you, there's a few things to keep in mind. First, collectors written in the Go language are preferred. While there's other languages you can use, Go is what's recommended. What I'll do right now is leave some sample code on the screen for a connector that was written in Go so you can get an idea of what that looks like. In addition to Go, if you prefer another language, connectors can be written in other languages such as Bash and Python. Another feature that enables NetData to monitor anything is support for the StatsD protocol. If you haven't heard of this before, StatsD is a leading solution for monitoring applications and giving administrators the ability to deliver custom metrics. With a built-in StatsD server, NetData is able to accept these metrics, giving you the ability to leverage this information within NetData. To put it more simply, you can think of StatsD as a standard language for application metrics that any application can produce if they're set up to do so. With a built-in interface through which these metrics can be pulled into NetData, it's able to show this information as well. An example use case is an application your company might use that was developed in-house and used internally. By default, NetData isn't going to have extensive knowledge of how your application works or what's important to you. However, the application's developer can connect the application to NetData via StatsD, and the information produced by the application would then be shown among your other metrics for that server. Of course, this is a more advanced subject and a full understanding of it isn't required to use NetData. However, it's a good idea to be aware of NetData's feature set and what's available to you. That way, if the need ever arises, you can leverage a particular feature whenever you might need it. I'll leave a link in the description below to a few articles that will provide even more information on StatsD with NetData. Finally, I wanted to touch on the fact that NetData also supports open metrics data as well, which means that any Prometheus exporter can be connected to NetData instead of having you use an actual Prometheus server. Now, Prometheus itself is out of scope for this particular series, but I wanted to point that out in case it's something that you use and might benefit from. At the very least, I wanted to make sure that you're aware of that. And that's all for today's episode of my NetData course here on Learn Linux TV. In this video, we took a look at core system metrics as well as application metrics, and we also talked a little bit about collectors and how they can extend NetData even further. In the next video, what we're going to do is take a look at logs within NetData. Now, before you run over to that video, I highly recommend that you take your time and make sure that you understand everything that I've gone over so far in this video before you move on to the next one. Anyway, in the meantime, I really do hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to click that like button and also make sure that you subscribe to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux, and I'll see you in the next episode.